Welcome back to the Tower Defense Devlog, name and theme to be determined. This week's video is going over a pretty crucial step for any tower defense, tower placement. To help guide me along, I want to set out exactly what my selection system should do. First, I need a button to hit that will enter me into a select mode. Second, while in selecting mode, my mouse should hover position in the world and display what tower I'm trying to place with a blueprint style material on it. Three, when I click, a tower should be placed where I clicked. Each of these steps have some more nuance to them, but this is the basic idea. Before starting on these steps, I wanted to get a clean test level to build upon and to also set up my game mode. In Unreal, your game mode is an anchor for your game, controlling many aspects such as what player controller you are using. It's also a great place to store game specific information, such as lives. Here I set up a quick life counter just to make sure I have it hooked up correctly, and after destroying units when they reach the end, the life counter subtracts correctly. Now back on track, let's go to step 1. Here we create a new button HUD element. Unreal is real handy in regards to providing some basic functionality to make things easier. Once we add a button element, we can set up an event to do something on button select. This button should talk to our game mode and player controller to put us into a selecting mode. In this mode, the tower I want to play should follow my mouse cursor and... Yeah, that's just a bit too many. We're spawning a tower at the mouse location each frame to make it appear like it is following the mouse cursor, but this means we are leaving behind a huge number of copies. With some logic to clean up older towers, we can see that it's now properly tracks my mouse and cleans up previous locations correctly. Great. Oh, there is one other problem. Since it's literally a tower, it starts active and does all the normal tower logic like shooting. We need to let the tower know it is considered placed or not to fix this. This will also help later in allowing me to turn on or off the tower if I ever need to. With that, step 1 and the beginning of step 2 are complete. We now move on to the mysterious world of materials. I'm not going to pretend to fully understand materials as this is a whole discipline unto itself. Here I just wanted a simple transparent material I can apply to the model to make it appear see-through to give players an indication they are placing a tower. My basic understanding of what this material does is that it's taken some world and model information to provide different levels of transparency onto itself. This will let you see geometry on the model rather than the model simply looking like a ghost. I will link below the helpful article that I used for this material. With this material created, I needed to apply it to the model during the selection phase. To do this, I default all towers to use this transparent material, overriding it with their normal material when they become active. While this is a new thing to manage from any models coming in, it's a small amount of design debt to get this feature working the way I like it. At this time, I also bring some new models to just see how the material works as a whole. The great thing about game dev is that if you want to spawn a giant bus, you can do just that. While comically large and unusable, it looks funny and that's what's important right now. This also gives me a new tower to begin using when I want to make multiple buttons for multiple different tower placements. I also find an interesting bug that just distracts me a bit. I can stack towers on top of each other to make a glorious quadruple decker bus. Rather than fixing this, I make it a problem for future me and work on something completely different and unrelated. The flat gray was getting boring and since I was doing some material stuff anyway, I decided to spruce up the level a bit with some more clear upper floor and pathing floor. A simple change, but if I'm going to be staring at this for a while, I want to make it pop a bit more for contrast. Okay, back to what I was supposed to be working on. I noticed some issues with the material being applied correctly at the correct time, so I go into the script to clean things up and make it more robust. The materials I update are proper variables now, and I update them in a few places to ensure that unplaced towers appear with the transparent material, while placed towers appear with their solid material. Now for the final step. How do I tell the UI how many towers I have that are placeable, and how does the button know which tower I should care about? Originally, I set up the button to be baked into the player HUD, but this was not how I should have gone about this. Here you'll see me struggle to make multiple buttons and figure out how to get them to show. The real answer is that the button itself can be a separate widget entirely, and I can add this widget as a children to the main HUD. This not only lets me make as many buttons as I want, but each button can be associated to an entirely different tower, and for whatever reason I want to remove a tower from the list, I can unparent the button and it will resolve itself to be deleted correctly. This is why I work on projects like these, as I want to better learn uh, different processes and what better processes even are. With a new widget made, I can also create a loadout in the game mode. This loadout will get cycled through at the start of the game, and a new button will be created for each tower in the loadout. In this case, I make three towers so you can see three different buttons, with each tower being properly associated to a unique tower. I can also scale this up and down super easily. Unfortunately, the material bug pops its head up again, so I wrap up this video, I'll fix that as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.